Good evening. Welcome to our Old Testament study here on Sunday night. We're working our way through Genesis. We made it through the first 11 chapters, which was about uh, the creation, the fall, Noah's flood, the Tower of Babel. And we come down to about chapter 12 or so, and we're introduced to a man named Abraham. And the rest of the book's going to be about Abraham and his descendants. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob's 12 sons, which became the patriarchs of the 12 tribes of Israel. We're very early on into that right now. Uh, we left off last week with Abram and Sarah, his wife. It was Abram and Sarai. I think God changes their name later to Abraham and Sarah. And we'll explain why, but uh, I still call them by the name we know most, usually Abraham and Sarah, even though they haven't been given that name yet. But we find out that the famine came. They, they left Ur of the Chaldees. They went into uh, Canaan where God told them to go to. But then things got tough. It was like their first test. And they decided, well, let's go down into Egypt. There's food down there. Uh, that story is going to be played more times in the Bible when they're up in the promised land and under uh, Jacob and Joseph. They end up having to go down into Egypt and stay in there hundreds of years that time. And the uh, of course, later on, we get to the New Testament, and the same thing happens to another Joseph and his wife Mary when uh, Herod's threatening to kill uh, all the babies. Or going to, he does kill all the babies in Bethlehem. But they were warned by an angel in a dream to uh, go off down into Egypt until everything's over with, until Herod's dead. And then they took baby Jesus down there and brought him back later on. That's why the Bible said in the prophecy beforehand, Out of Egypt I have called my son. Well, here we are, chapter 13 of Genesis, if you want to read along in your Bible with me. So the famine must be over with, because first verse of 14 says, Abram went up out of Egypt. He's been down there a while. He's accumulated a lot when he was down there. God's blessed him even down in Egypt. Well, he went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and remember he had his nephew Lot with him, into the south, into the south, back into the southern part of Canaan, the promised land. And Abram was very rich. Now, a lot of times, rich people are given a bad rap by the church. Uh, rich people are not all bad. Some people get their riches in a bad way. But uh, here's Abraham, who specifically in the Bible is called the friend of God. And what do we learn about him right here? Was Abraham was very rich. He had silver and gold and cattle, and cattle it goes on to say. I guess that comes from the thing that... Uh, in the New Testament, it says it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle. And the disciples says, well, who can go in or in then? And Jesus said, the things that are impossible with men are possible with God. If you've got more riches, it just means you've got more responsibility and you will be accounted, accountable to God with, with how you take care of that stewardship that God's entrusted you to. Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and gold, and he went on his journeys from the south unto Bethel, up into the northern part of the promised land, above Jerusalem today, unto this place where his tent had been in the beginning. That's where they were in the beginning, and then the famine come. They ran them down there. The belly will run to anywhere looking for food, won't it? Between Bethel and Ai, unto the place of the altar. Now, remember back a chapter or two when they first went in there, and Abraham pitched his tent. And he went out and he built an altar, a place to worship. I said, if you follow Abraham's journeys through Genesis, it's like everywhere he goes, he pitches his tent, there's his home, but then he goes out there and he builds an altar too, his place to meet with God and worship. Unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first, and Abram called on the name of the Lord. There he prayed. So here we find uh, Abraham, he's been gone from the promised land down into Egypt for no telling how long, and he comes back out of there, and what's he do? He goes back to that altar. He returns to the altar. And I will tell you what, there's a lot, of, a lot of Christians today need to make a trip back to the altar because they've, they've left the place that God's appointed them to be, and they've got out in the world too long, but you can always go back to that altar. And there, call on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, chapter five, verse 5, Lot also, which went with Abram, he had flocks and herds and tents. So old nephew Lot, he got really blessed and acquired riches while he was off down into Egypt too. And they were both so rich, they had so big herds, that the land was not able to bear them. They, only so many head of cattle can be on a certain amount of grass. 
so that there wasn't a big enough spot there for them to all, so they, it leads to strife that they might dwell together. For their substance was great, so they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. So here we find out that, you know, okay, money brings its own concerns with it. Now, now they've got to deal with something they never had to deal with when they was poor. But now they're blessed so much that they've got to work out and figure out how to, how to do what they need to do. And by the way, it's like a, a little appendix on the end of this. There was a fight between Lot's men and a fight between Abraham's men. They got in strife together. And then it says, And the Canaanite and the Parasite dwelled then in the land. Now, God the Holy Spirit put that there for some reason. And you know, it might just be this. These are supposed to be God's men out there. And the Parasites and the Canaanites, they was the pagans that was dwelling in the land there among them. And the pagans, you know, they were looking over there and they thought, them people, they're claiming to be men of God. But look at them. They're, they, they can't get along. They're fussing and fighting. Their herdsmen's into a big brawl over there and everything. And so you, you keep that in mind, you know, Christians, that uh, Christians need to get along. Even if we're in different churches or different denominations, we may not believe all exactly like all the secondary doctrine, but we ought to recognize that we're brothers and sisters in Christ. And if we don't behave properly toward one another, the world's out there watching us, and that hurts the witness of the church. And Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? God given them plenty of land out there. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate yourself, I pray thee, from me. And Abram very generously says to his nephew Lot, if you want to take the left hand, I'll take the right hand. If you want to go to the right, I'll go to the left. But we're going to have to divide these herds up. Verse 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, the Jordan River, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. This is what it was like, he said, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. We ain't got to that yet. That's over chapter 19, but Moses is writing this hundreds of years later as he records what, how this happened. And he said, it was such a beautiful, well-watered land along the Jordan down through there before the Lord rained fire and brimstone down on Sodom and Gomorrah. We're, we're getting ahead, but we, you stay tuned for a few weeks for that one. It was like the land of Eden, Egypt, as thou comest into Zoar, well, that'd be along the Nile River where the grass was so lush and green. That's real important if you got herds, right? Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and he pitched his tent toward Sodom. Now, see, we're finding out something here. We're going to Old Lot looks over there and he says, over there toward that city of Sodom. He said, boy, they some nice place to live over there. Let's, let's pitch our tent over there and put our herds over there. This is chapter 13. By the time we get to chapter 19, he's done moved downtown Sodom. And boy, it was a wicked society back then. And I'm not just saying that. The Bible's going to say that right here in a minute. And uh, so you know, there's a lot of problems come with him. Now, it begins with him just looking that way and pitching his tent toward Sodom. He ought to stay away from that place as far as he could get. He pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said to Abram, after that lot was separated from him, the Lord said to Abram, lift up your eyes now. Look from the place you are northward, southward, eastward, and westward, for all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it. And to your seed or your descendants, Forever. Now see the the Israel the Israelite people over there today got a pretty good claim when they say that land over there where they're living at said this is our land we've got the deed for it in the Bible. God gave it to his, to Abraham and all of his descendants. And I will make thy seed verse sixteen as the dust of the earth. Can you count the dust of the earth? I couldn't even count the sand on the beach. 
I will make your seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. You're going to have descendants as much as the dust on the earth, Abraham. Now, Abraham couldn't fathom that. You know, he kept thinking he was going to have a bunch of kids and grandkids, and he did eventually, but uh, it took him a long time. We're going to find out just to get the first one, little Isaac. And, uh, but we know something because we live in the New Testament era. We can put our Christian lenses on and look back and interpret the Old Testament that way, and we realize that one of Abraham's descendants that finally came down through history there thousands of years later was the Lord Jesus Christ. And we find out that anybody that trusts in the Lord Jesus Christ is a Christian. And those Christians, the New Testament says, are counted as the descendants of Abraham. That's why the little kids at church sometimes sing, Father Abraham has many sons and I am one of them and so are you. I'm not biologically Abraham's descendant. I don't have his DNA in me, but I'm in Christ. And therefore we are counted as the children of Abraham too. I'll make your seed as the dust of the earth, so if a man can number it, then your seed will also be numbered. 17, arise, walk through the land in the length of it and the breadth of it, for I'll give it to you. Abraham didn't have to earn it. God's given it to him. That's grace, ain't it? Then Abram removed his tent. We'd say he moved his tent. And he came and dwelt in the plains of Mamre, which is in Hebrew. And now, I don't even have to read the rest of this now. If you're reading along, studying with me, you know what it's going to say. Abraham moved his tent to another location. What did he do next? And there he built an altar to the Lord. Find you a place to worship. That's important. See you next time.